pros. Seem to have a little technical difficulty. Yeah, he went off for a second there. Hopefully, he'll come right back in. We hear what uh, Ali Sadiq. Yeah, man. In the building, man. Very powerful, powerful conversations. Like his screen froze up, but we'll get it back here. Right. You know, uh, finish this interview off in a minute. But yeah, man, uh, powerful information today. I didn't expect it to go like this. Nah. Not nah. this interview, but I'm glad That's it did. So good. Yeah. Definitely, definitely a great one, man. Yes, sir. So if you're listening, you enjoying this uh, content today, man, hit that five star rating. Stop playing around with us. Also, you want to make sure you subscribe to the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast right now because you got to be in the building. You got to be alerted with the new episodes coming out. I'm telling you, we got so many dope guests coming in next week, man. So, all right, he's back in the building. We'll get him right back in. We got some technical difficulties, but you're back in the building, man. Yeah, I'm back in it. So, I go to these, I go to these schools, you know, um, these alternative schools and kind of give them a different perspective from, and you know, I donate to them as well. When I did my, when I did my special, I donated, I had Comedy Central donate the money to the one, this one particular school. And the thing is I go in as one of them. You know what I'm saying? I don't like, I don't talk to these kids from, I'm big brother. I'm an adult. I'm like I, I I talk from. Hey man, I used to be you. Like mm-hmm. I used to be. I'm like yo man. The same thing you thinking. I used to think. You know. But let me tell you how I got to where I am now. Like I remember the, one of the funniest stories. I remember this girl. She in the eighth grade. Man, she in this alternative school because she had school selling pills. And the teachers, you know, they say that she kind of real distant she really don't talk because you know she probably you know so mad that she in this position you know and she hustling for whatever her family or whatever i don't know what her, her deal was mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm talking to her and I, I i said well let me can i say can we can we agree upon something she's like what and, you know i'll make an agreement with you you know you've been coming up here for weeks you know so i'll make an agreement with you i said well you in the eighth grade now I say I'm gonna make an agreement with you. You give me four years of you give me four years of high school, then you give me four more years of college, and I guarantee you, you can sell all the pills you want to sell, and ain't nobody gonna say nothing. Mm. She said, "How that's gonna happen?" I said, "Cause you'll be a pharmacist," okay. and she she looked at me like. What? Right. Nobody ever even told me that I could do this thing legally. You know what I'm saying? Kids that be in there for fighting. The girl told me that she was in there. She she beat this girl up because the girl was talking down on her dead on her dead relative. And I said, "What well, did did the relative hear?" So everybody else started laughing. I'm like, "No, no, I'm, I'm being I'm being for real. I'm like." I said, so this is what I'm trying to get you to understand. I said, you allow somebody to to do like this. This is this is a thing, and you're a puppet. You are all these strings. So you allow somebody to puppeteer with your emotions to get you in this situation. And they because they were speaking down on somebody that they did not know and that could not hear them. Mm-hmm. I say, so let me tell you. I say, I got on my chest, I got my I got my sister's name tattooed on my chest. My sister died when she was eight years old. Okay. So I'm on the basketball court and I'm in, I'm I'm in, I'm locked up and I'm I'm playing this dude one-on-one and I'm wearing him out. I'm wearing him out. And so he said, and I and I quote with because I'm fasting right now, so I can't say what exactly what he said. Yeah, I'm finna hold you down. Like that female dog on you that you got tatted on your chest. Mm. That's rough, right? That's a rough way to go. I said, um, now I, I could have snapped off and bust him in his bust him in his mouth mm. and, and went live on him in this prison. But I understood the only reason you saying this nonsense is because this jumper. Mm-hmm. This jumper. I'm Chris Jack. I'm Abdul Raoufing you right now. <laughs> so 
<laughs> you get done. You get done bad. You know what I'm saying? I said, and so I, I pulled back and hit another jumper. I said, hey, man, you can go sit down now with all that negative attitude that you got, Playboy. Next. You know what I'm saying? So, because we playing, we was playing um one up, one down. You know, you lose, you got to sit down and you won't be back up for the rest of the rec time. Hmm. So I said, man, I could have easily let that man trigger me, but he don't know my sister. He don't even know the situation. He just getting done up on this court and he trying to psych me out of my game. He trying to shake me out of my game. Hmm. Like, no, nah, ain't nothing happening. Take this, take this left hand layup and go on and sit down somewhere. <laughs> Who was Ali Sadiq pre-prison and who came out post-prison? Ooh, boy, that's a deep question. Yo, man, I was I was conscious, but I was I was um very flawed. Very flawed. And I didn't I didn't have enough self-confidence for a lot of things you know you i was kind of like just follow like i say you know i'm just following the group you know even though sometimes i knew the group was all the way wrong and i'm just following the group so and then i got very angry because things were taken away from me that was out of my control but that's that was the consequences of following group. So I lost my sister at um when she was eight, and that was one of the things that you know I used to go pick up from school every day. I would stop hustling to go grab my sister, and then after I lost my sister, four months later, I lose my firstborn son. Damn. So it was it was these things which made me very angry and very dangerous that I was I was um taking my pain, distributing distributing that evenly out through the streets that, t- towards people that had nothing to do with what happened to me, you know what I'm saying? So when I went in, I was, um, I was extremely aggressive for them first two years. Like I was extremely aggressive. Like, like, like I went in with like I had something to prove Instead of just being who I was, and this 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 old cat named Blackshaw kind of set me down, and he's like, "Yo, man, you you living in here like you gonna be here forever, and you should take this time to try to repair yourself, not reinvent, not redo, but repair the things that are troubling you." So I took I took that time, man, and and and, and, and kind of looked at myself in a different perspective. And then I came out, the way I came out was very confident and and always very ready to challenge the status quo. You know, what people like I am who I am now because one, the creator. The law of one with the Allah. And the other side of it is that that strength of being able to stand on my own. And I stand on I stand on my word. I don't, you know, it is what it is with me. And like when people used to tell me, man, you live in Houston. If you want to be, if you want to get big and comedy, you got to move to LA and New York. That's following, that's following the normal protocol. That was like following the fray again. I'm like, Nah, that ain't gonna work for me. I can I can do it, I can do it straight from here. And I had that self-determination to do it from Houston and never move and and had an industry come to me was a bigger, was a big one of the that was the biggest accomplishment in this in this whole business that the game I forced it to come to me because I wasn't going to it. Like I, I wasn't. It's just like I'm not compromising nothing because if people constantly think that you got to move and put yourself in a car and, and struggle in order to make it, you can do that at you can do that at home. And then the other place, the other thing is, how do the people from my neighborhood, the people who seen me come up, how do they benefit from me if I'm living somewhere else? Okay. And, and so 
you got to see me do it and appreciate me for doing it from here and then watch the accolades come from other places like yo man this dude is thorough you know what i'm saying and he out of houston he ain't, he didn't he ain't in la being a la comic he ain't in new york being a new york comic he being a houston he being a comic he out of houston and they love him everywhere but he still represent where he's from you know what i'm saying so that's that's the type of person came out of prison is this very determined person man people don't understand i was working two jobs man i was working two jobs and cleaning houses with my aunt when i got out of prison so i get out of prison in october 1997 october 21st 1997. my birthday that's crazy yo you a libra yep october 21st 83. yeah i'm i'm 1973 october 17th oh okay my man you know what i'm saying so the thing the thing is by 1999 i didn't quit both job i didn't quit both jobs you know what i'm saying and i'm just doing comedy full time so that's not even that's the, like a year and a half, you know, of coming home, being determined. You know what I'm saying? So I'm selling men's clothes in the mall and I'm selling sunglasses in the same mall. Then I'm going to clean houses. You know I'm saying I work for BFI doing the recycle things. It was a determined. I was in prison for, for six years getting paid nothing. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so when I came out I'm focused man I'm locked in to what I'm supposed to do and I, and I had a daughter at, I had a daughter in the course of that you know what I'm saying so it was some struggle in there but it was it was more reward to be able to just do it and constantly just focus man and 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 show people that you can do something different with your life and you don't have to be your past you don't have to be your past you know what I'm saying you can you can like yo that's your old credit you know what I'm saying you got you got new credit now you see oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely definitely so yeah that, that's that's my that's my last one I got one more question for yeah, you brother right. appreciate having you on here man Alex Sadiq is in the building the hip hop that's since the podcast hit that like button that five star rating wherever you're watching or listening snitch culture we see that popular as hell in 2020 you obviously did some time you know how serious that is. Speak on it real quick if you don't mind. You laughing right now, so it must be. <laughs> speak on it, man. The, the the thing about um snitching is it, because I'm because I'm a little more intelligent than I used to be. It's kind of if somebody somebody harm you i know you you my people somebody harm you i know who did it do i seek revenge or do i turn them in you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so if i seek revenge do i gotta kill everybody because that's how I think. I'm I'm gonna think like this. You killed my man, so I got to bang you, your brother, your cousin, your father, your uncle, your mom. You I gotta get I gotta get every I gotta clean the house. Because if if I bang one person, you're gonna come back and you're gonna get you gonna get me. Do I go through all that? You know what I'm saying? It's it's a it's a tight it's a tight thing, but with people snitching, oh he over there he over there got work. I want to be the person on the block with the work, so I'm gonna tell on him. Then I'm gonna move in with the work. Now, as a former as a former pharmaceutical rep. Do I respect the dudes that's out there damaging the community with work? Now I'm I might